All right, welcome everybody. This is the Digital Compression Technology Webinar, Products and Solutions from Emerson. Uh, today we're joined by Zaki Abedin, Regional Sales Manager of Emerson Commercial and Residential Solutions. Uh, Zach, he's the guy to ask. He's been in the business for 14 years, and he's got a really good presentation to, to show you. Just a few housekeeping items up front. We will be taking questions at the end, so please uh, pop them in the Q&A box, the bottom of your screen, or in chat, and we'll address those. Uh, and like I said, this is being recorded, so you can find it on the HRAI's YouTube page after the fact, and uh, please feel free to share it in your network. Without further ado, I'm going to let Zachy introduce himself. I will be here if you need anything. Nice to see you, Zaki. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, and yes. I'd just like to say thank you to uh, HRAI for, for hosting this webinar uh, and welcome everyone. Um, just, just so we uh, get started on the right foot, a little bit of uh, an introduction. So uh, as Matthew said, I'm the regional sales manager for Emerson. Uh, I've been in the industry for 14 years uh, plus years. I've worked for OEMs such as uh, Simcoe Refrigeration, uh, Deep Chill. I've worked for uh, the uh, uh, different business units within Emerson, uh, including the automation side of the business, uh, the White Rogers, which is the more of the heating side of the business, and also as a technical engineer for Copeland. Uh, I'm currently back in school. Uh, uh, during uh, the pandemic, I figured I'd do something valuable with my time, so I'm doing that part-time. And uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, and also my email address is there as well. So uh, the topic is digital compression. So why go digital? Um, really, it is, uh, you know, uh, it is the superior solution for es essentially the, um, the, the food safety uh, market. So grocery stores and, and things like that, they typically use traditional modulation technology. And traditional modulation technology, it usually runs at full load uh, energy, no matter what the capacity is. So what digital uh, compression technology allows you to do is it allows you to modulate the capacity uh, based on the uh, uh, you know, precise temperature control. So you can see the chart there on the right and it shows you a standard uh, temperature control uh, uh, comparison. And then you've got digital, which is a lot tighter and more precise control. And the way it achieves it is by using uh, an electronic controller uh, which can be integrated with your main store controller, which you'll have uh, at your facility. Um, uh, so uh, that is how it, how it integrates. Um, and as we know, there's a lot of new regulations and also higher energy costs, as we see. Uh, uh, I know I filled up at the fuel pump and, and we, we're all feeling the, the higher energy costs for sure. So it means that the ROI is even more critical. So where are some of the applications for digital modulation? So any, anywhere where you see large uh, load swings. So um, uh, some examples are schools, restaurants, pools, hospitals, museums. So uh, large spaces where you know, you've got large doors, you've got people going in and out, uh, and especially supermarkets, because at the end of the day, you know, food safety is critical. And um, really that precise temperature control, you get most value with uh, in, in supermarkets specifically, but there's a lot of different applications. That being said, there are some applications where I would say digital is not a good fit. So, um, you know, if you don't have very large swings, maybe uh, there might be more cost-effective uh, solutions, but there's definitely a, a, a market out there for, for digital. So let's get right into it. How do, we, uh, how do we get into uh, digital control? So uh, as you know, one of the brands under Emerson is Copeland Compressors. You know, we've been, we just celebrated our 100 year uh, anniversary at Copeland uh, and we've been building, making, manufacturing compressors, um, uh, you know, for, 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 for 100 years. And we've got a couple of pictures there of the scroll compressor and the digital discus, which I'll, which I'll be uh, going into more detail into how they work. So how does it work? So digital technology, it's, it's fundamentally different from inverter technology. So that's something a lot of you may be familiar with. Uh, you've heard of VFDs. So that is another solution and, and full transparency. We do have VFD solutions as well, if that's something that you require. But um, uh, digital is a little bit different. And the way it, it, it does it is um, it achieves um, uh, uh, 
uh, matching modulation by what's called pulse width modulation. And, and, and it does that by time averaging a loaded state and an unloaded state. Uh, and, and, and really the, the benefits of digital is that it's very simple for a contractor to, to, to apply. Uh, it's also very reliable and um, it's, it's just a straightforward uh, retrofit or upgrade. Um, the motor speed also remains constant in, in the application. Uh, you know, 3,600 RPM for scrolls and about 1,750 RPM for the discus or also known as semi-hermetic at, uh, at 60 Hertz. So as you can see, there's an example below of 50% loaded. So in a 50% loaded state, you'll have the compressor pumping for 10 seconds and then not pumping for 10 seconds in a 20 second cycle. So that gives you 50% uh, loaded state. Um, and similarly, we have another example on the right where it's 80% loaded. And the way that does it is the compressor pumps for 16 seconds, and then it doesn't pump for four seconds, which gives you an 80% loaded state. And this is in a 20 second cycle, which is a standard uh, cycle for refrigeration. Now that can be modified in, in, our, in our digital compressors, but uh, that is typically the, the default and the standard cycle that we see um, for refrigeration. I think air conditioners, you might see 15 second cycle. So let's take a closer look at how the scroll does this. So the digital scroll, you can go all the way from 10% up all the way to 100% capacity modulation. And the way it does it is you see um, on the left, you've got a, a typical fixed scroll running at full capacity. And in, a, in an unloaded state, what happens is there's a separation with the floating seal of the top part of the, the, the scroll. And there's a one millimeter scroll separation, uh, which means that even though the scroll's running, the motor's running, there's no capacity. It's not cooling. So uh, uh, in the example at the bottom there on the left, we see a scroll running at 20% capacity. So it'll be loaded for four seconds, and then for 16 seconds, it's unloaded uh, in, a, in a 20 second cycle. And that gives you 20% uh, capacity. And then on the, on the right, you see the chart that shows the time averaging that I spoke about earlier. So you can go all the way from 10% to 100%. And with that pulse width modulation, you get that linear control. Um, in terms of the nomenclature, a lot of you I'm sure have seen scroll compressors. They start with the Z. Uh, on the third letter, we, you'll see a D, and the D stands for digital. So that denotes that this model is a digital scroll as opposed to an, a standard fixed scroll. Um, so I mentioned the controller earlier. So the onboard uh, on, the, on the scrolls and the, the discus, there is, a, there is a controller which acts as the interface between the compressor and the central controller on your rack. So there's a system controller that's, you know, uh, uh, there's a, you know, E2 or an E3 in your, in your supermarket, which uh, is the main controller and that's connected to your, uh, to your um, digital compressor. And the compressor uh, modulates, by, and, I'll, and I'll show you some uh, examples of how it does that uh, uh, by uh, loading and unloading using a solenoid um, uh, and sending a demand signal from the, from the central controller. And it also uh, protects uh, against high discharge temperatures by using a thermistor. So if it, if it hits that maximum uh, temperature limit, uh, the uh, con controller will uh, protect the compressor by turning it off, extending the life of the com uh, compressor. So here's a nice uh, uh, digital uh, uh, you know, depiction of how it works. So you've got a three to 10 ton scroll design, so our smaller uh, digital scroll compressors. So you can see that the, uh, there's the solenoid there um, on the left, kind of uh, loading and unloading. Uh, you've got the suction, uh, uh, you know, the refrigerant coming in, low pressure gas coming in, and then the scroll increasing the pressure and the discharge pressure, uh, uh, discharge refrigerant coming out uh, from the top of the scroll. And then the, uh, the, uh, the uh, solenoid kind of, turns on and off depending on whether it's in loaded state or unloaded state um, by, by separating the scroll, as I, as I said earlier, with the floating seal. 
Uh, keep in mind that the, um, the smaller scrolls do require a tubing kit, an external tubing kit. You can see that on the picture on the left here. Uh, so anytime you see that tubing kit, you'll, you'll know that it is a, a digital scroll compressor and you can go from 10% to 100% modulation. Once we move to the larger scrolls, which are the eight to 15 ton uh, uh, scroll, uh, it actually uh, achieves the um, uh, the scroll separation by uh, by cavity modulation. So instead of uh, having an external uh, tubing kit, it actually does it by by um, uh, an internal uh, manifold by by routing gas um, from the cavity into the into the shell itself. And again, you can get uh, ten percent all the way to hundred percent capacity modulation on the larger scrolls. On the discus side, it works slightly differently. As you know, discus compressors you know, use uh, pistons um, uh, for uh, increasing the pressure. So you can see here in a standard loaded state, you'll have uh, low pressure refrigerant coming in, a gas coming in uh, on the suction side. So it'll come in, it'll cool the motor, and then it'll pass through the uh, valve body and into the valve plate where it's then compressed by the pistons. And then it exits the compress, uh, compressor at, at, at uh, high pressure. So um, essentially uh, what happens is uh, there are these uh, unloader pistons that are located. And what the unloader piston does is it allows the suction gas to flow into the valve plate. So this is a standard application for your uh, uh, normal discus, a fixed discus compressor. Then what happens in, in a digital mode is you have the unloaded state. So the same thing in the unloaded state, uh, the, uh, the gas uh, enters the compressor, passes through the body, but the unloader pistons uh, actually, uh, in, in this case is a 4D compressor, um, it blocks the gas from entering the valve plate. So essentially, it, there's no compression happening. So even though the compressor is running, there's no, uh, similar to the scroll, there's no, uh, there's no uh, uh, actual capacity. Uh, and in terms of the nomenclature, similarly, there is a D uh, on the fourth letter uh, um, on the scroll. So you'll see here on the left, I've got your standard uh, fixed um, uh, discus compressors and the equivalent digital model uh, for, in this case, an R404A uh, um, uh, compressor. So you can see that the, the, the fourth letter will be a D denoting that it is a digital uh, discus. And in terms of the modulation range for the 3D uh, uh, discus, you can go all the way from 10% all the way to 100. And as you get to the larger discus compressors, such as the 4D, it goes from 50% uh, to 100%. And then the 6D is 33% to 100%. And that is because of the number of, of pistons on the, on the discus. A quick note, again, I'm not going to have too many uh, equations, uh, I promise, in this, uh, in this uh, presentation. But I wanted to quickly talk about compression ratio. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the compression ratio. And what that is, is, is the ratio of the discharge pressure, absolute discharge pressure, to the absolute suction pressure. And the way you calculate it is you take the absolute discharge pressure and you divide it with the uh, absolute suction pressure and that gives you the ratio. So in this example, we have a discharge pressure of 145 PSI, suction pressure of five PSI. Um, and don't forget, there's also the atmospheric pressure of you know, that standard of 14.7, you add that in, to the discharge divided by the suction, and you get a ratio of eight to one. So what this means is the discharge pressure is eight times the magnitude of the suction pressure. Now, why is this important? High compression ratio can actually cause overheating on your, compress uh, on your compressors. So we want that compression ratio to be uh, lower. Of course, we do want compression, but we want it, we don't want it to be too high. Uh, and there is a, uh, a study in uh, uh, ACHR which shows that lower compression ratios will actually cause higher volumetric efficiencies. And we'll go into later why that's important with the digital. Um, and it also lowers your discharge temperature and protects your compressor. 
So in supermarket rack applications, um, typically the way we do it is we keep the scroll digital as the lead compressor in a rack. So in a rack, in this example, we have uh, uh, two racks and, and the first rack will have one digital and two fixed scrolls. So as you can see on the, the, the graph on the right, the, the digital is sort of the lead compressor and it does the linear uh, modulation as, as, I, as I mentioned earlier. And then the fixed scrolls, which are basically running at full tilt, come in when, when you need that capacity requirement uh, at, at this point here. Um, so they can be paired. Um, so you don't need every compressor in a rack to be digital. Typically it's just one, and, and we'll, 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 we'll show you some examples why. And um, what this does is it gives you that superior load matching. And, and as, as I'll mention later, um, there is less compressor cycling as well. So here's a, another example of a rack where we have uh, um, discus compressors. So uh, there's two racks um, and the first one, we identify the compressor that we want to uh, retrofit or upgrade to a digital. In this case, we go with the 3D compressor. So we'll pick the second compressor here. Uh, and what we'll do is uh, we'll identify the equivalent digital version of that compressor and then uh, replace that compressor. So in this case, uh, we have a 3D S3 compressor and uh, we identify that the 3D SD compressor is the direct replacement. And similarly uh, for the, the rack at the bottom as well. So, so, so again, we identify one of those compressors in the rack and that tends to be your leading uh, compressor in that, in that rack. Um, so uh, what about real life examples of, of the effects of digital? So we can see here um, the benefits of digital. So the red line in the middle uh, denotes the point at which we activate um, the digital uh, discus compressor. So previous to that, we have typical racks running at full tilt. What we'll notice is the suction pressure is uh, you know, lower before the, um, before the digital is activated. And then once we turn on the digital, we'll notice that the average suction pressure was three to four PSI higher. And if you remember earlier, as I mentioned on the compression ratio, having a higher uh, PSI uh, means more volumetric efficiency. And that's the key takeaway. What that does is it increases your volumetric efficiency of the, of the compressor and really uh, uh, leads to more energy savings. Uh, not only that, but you also get significant reduction in compressor cycling, so turning on and off. So you can see before the red line, you have the compressors turning on and off constantly. And then after digital, it reduces the number of starts. And then I'll show you another example here of an even more, uh, uh, you know, uh, a more uh, a higher effect of, of, of the digital, you'll see uh, with the digital uh, in this rack, um, once we've activated it, we've noticed an 89% of reduction in, in, in the suction pressure range uh, uh, with an eight PSI increase on the suction side and leading to lower compression ratio. Um, you can see the wild swings and the suction pressure are basically controlled. Um, the range is, 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 is a lot tighter on the, on the suction pressure. And also the average suction pressure is increased as well. So you get two benefits. And again, less cycling. You can see here in this rack, we identified that the 3D uh, compressor is the, is the one that was retrofitted with the digital. So you can see that that one's turn is stayed on the entire time. And then you have the 2D and the 4D, which turn on as needed with, with the load. So you can see it's not uh, turning on and off as it was before the digital was activated. So it went from 900 starts per day to 12 starts in four days. So as you can imagine, a lot of the compressor electronics, you're saving not only on energy, but you're also saving on parts and, and reliability.
So let's recap some of the benefits of, of um, why you should include digital in your refrigeration retrofit um, projects. Um, one, it reduces compressor uh, cycling. Uh, it increases system reliability by, as I mentioned before, um, improving contactor life. You're having to replace less contactors um, because essentially, you know, turning on and off, uh, it, it reduces the life of your contactor. So you're, you're, you're not only saving on energy and, and, uh, and um, uh, efficiency, but you're also saving reliability. It also improves system load match capability, as I mentioned in the beginning, giving you precise temperature and humidity control to 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So for uh, applications such as you know, food and beverage, uh, even um, uh, other applications that require precise control, digital is the way to go. Um, it also raises the average suction temperature with the examples that I that I showed earlier, and uh, what that does is it um, it increases the volumetric efficiency as I as I showed with the example. Here's a little fact: for every one psi increase in suction pressure, you're improving the uh, the volumetric efficiency by two percent. So in the example that I showed you, you know, it was an eight psi increase. So you're 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 going uh, you're increasing it by almost 16%. Uh, and, uh, you know, what are the other benefits of in increasing efficiency? Lower energy costs, right? Lower, lower electrical bills. And it also improves energy efficiency. You know, as we know, there are more government regulations coming in and uh, uh, new refrigerants, new technology. Uh, the more efficient you can get your system, the higher the ROI on your, on your investment, right? So uh, not only do we, do we talk to um, contractors about this, but we also talk to end users. We talk to consultants uh, and, and uh, you know, encourage them to include digital as part of their CapEx and, and uh, CapEx projects and uh, operational improvement projects. I wanted to uh, add a quick note on comparing digital compression to hot gas bypass, something we see a lot in, in the industry. Um, what hot gas bypass are, and, and it's just a, a bypass valve that's added to the system. And what it does is it essentially adds a false load to your evaporator coil, almost like a fake load. Um, and it is an effective way of, of, of you know, uh, reducing your, your uh, energy costs, uh, but it is a very sort of a brute force way of doing things. Digital compression uh, is a lot more um, uh, accurate when it comes to the load matching. Um, so it's, it's, it's much better on the full load and the part load uh, efficiencies because it matches the system, as I showed you with the linear, uh, linear control. Um, and it actually is 30% more efficient. And we've done studies that have showed this in terms of dollar values. It is 30% more efficient than uh, using uh, just a standard system with hot gas bypass. Um, and uh, also, you know, you've got proven oil return as well uh, in, in enhancing uh, system, uh, system variability. So uh, reliability, uh, I'm sorry. Um, but essentially, uh, one of the questions uh, we get is, uh, how about um, lubrication on, on, the, on the compressors? One of the advantages of, of having the digital comp uh, compressors running, the motor running constantly, is you do get that, you know, the oil carryover uh, in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the compressor and ensuring that, the, uh, the, you know, that there's full lubrication on the, on the discus and the scroll. So where will you see digital compressors? Um, you'll see it, as I mentioned, on supermarket racks, food service, but it's not just limited to that. You'll see it on commercial systems as well, rooftops. You, you'll see it on in walk-in coolers. You'll see it in uh, freezers. You'll also see it in warehouses and in, in large uh, buildings where there's a lot of load swings, right? Because that's where you're gonna get your, your bang for your buck essentially. And you'll also see uh, uh, it in process chillers and, and air dryers as well. So there's a 
a very wide array of, of applications for, for digital, uh, not just limited to uh, supermarket racks and, and, and food service. So, okay, so now you're ready to make your investment in digital. Uh, what are some of the resources that are available to you to, to make it happen? Um, so we've got a number of different resources. Uh, one is uh, what we call our retrofit kits. And I'm just showing you an example here of a 3D digital discus retrofit kit. So, you know, this essentially this kit has everything that you need to, to upgrade your digital compressor, uh, your uh, discus compressor to a digital discus. Um, so you'll get, uh, the kit will have everything that you need, uh, including the, uh, you know, valve plate assembly, all the required gaskets, the digital head assembly, <clears throat> and also the conduit for the electrical connections. So um, these can be, you know, per, as I'll mention later, these can be purchased from uh, your uh, local uh, authorized wholesaler. We've got uh, locations throughout Canada. Um, and if you ever need help with selecting it, you know, we've got resources uh, at Emerson and also at our, at our uh, partners that can help you with the, uh, with the um, selection. Um, we have a parts list catalog as well. So what it shows you is it shows you the standard model and what would be the equivalent uh, digital model that you need. And what are the kits that you require? What are the, uh, what are the parts that you need uh, with, with, the, um, uh, with the, uh, uh, the digital? So uh, the coil kit, unloader head kit, and everything else is, 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 is there as well. Um, and some of the other support material that you have are assessment sheets for uh, contractors that are that are doing field service. So they can essentially do a site assessment when they go go to the field, look at what's what's existing, uh, and provide recommendations based on the racks that are there and what you would need to upgrade. So um, this is an example, the second page here of what the site assessment sheet looks like. Uh, and also, um, we've got AE bulletins, which are an, an excellent resource for uh, really more technical details, like specifications. Uh, if you need to know a little bit more about, for example, I showed you the controller earlier. There is a, uh, uh, an AE bulletin that goes into detail about the controllers, the IDCM modules, which are the controllers that are on board. Um, and there's an example there as well of, of a uh, digital compressor uh, controller module. Uh, an example of a site assessment, a completed one that was done, uh, I believe in New York, where uh, we went in and uh, did, uh, a contractor went in and did a, um, a site assessment. So you can see they filled out the different racks. Uh, you know, there's fi uh, five different racks. They did a full assessment you know, noted down the compressor model number and the serial number, if it has an unloader or if it doesn't have an unloader and then make recommendations based on which model to replace as the, uh, which compressor to replace as a digital uh, on, the, uh, on the rack. So uh, just a couple of examples here of, of what would be included in the assessment it would be your compressor model that, that needs to be replaced for the upgrade or the retrofit the controller kit and uh, uh, in the first example, and also a digital coil kit as well. So, uh, and the, uh, for the right voltage, so make sure the voltage is correct. The, the last, uh, the TFD denotes the voltage, and this case would be a 230 volt uh, compressor. Um, and the last three digits are just a bill of materials. So uh, it, you, you will get essentially all that you need in, in each of the racks and with a recommendation uh, and all of the parts will be included as well. Last but not least, we have a, a very effective app, which is the Copeland mobile app. Um, you're actually able to, uh, if you scan the, uh, the barcode there, you can download the, the Copeland mobile uh, app. And the app allows you to, um, you know, search parts uh, to look at, um, to look at, uh, to look at, you know, capacities, to look at what are the service parts, what are the electrical components you need for digital compressors and also for the fixed compressors as well. 
And as I mentioned earlier, we have a very large authorized wholesaler network uh, in Canada um, that has, you know, experience, expertise. They've they've done retrofit installs before. So, you know, uh, feel free to reach out to them as well. Um, uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, digital upgrade, uh, and you can also reach out to myself. Uh, I will share my contact information if you do have any, uh, any questions or any um, uh, potential applications for digital upgrade. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, that's essentially it. Uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I've also shared my email there as well. If you have any questions with respect to uh, digital uh, compressors, uh, I hope I was able to convey the value uh, add uh, benefits of, of shifting to digital. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, there are certain applications where it's probably better for you not to upgrade if it's not a, a large um, you know, load swings or, or things like that. But there are definitely applications uh, where digital makes sense. So thanks a lot for your time. Uh, I'll open it up for questions now, Matthew. Uh, if there are any questions, we've got uh, one. Uh, we got what waiting here for you, and um, yeah, yeah, we got a lot of time for questions. So please put them in the chat or the Q and A. But this one comes from Dan regarding single digital compressor applications like a rooftop. What is Copeland's recommendation regarding how long the compressor runs at minimum load, ten percent, without possibly running out of oil? That is a great question. And that is something I wanted to kind of expand on a little bit, which is, um, and, I'll, and what I'll do is I will go back to the slide where I had the differences between, the fundamental difference between uh, the digital technology and the inverter technology. So the real benefit I would say, and there are, again, we sell VFDs as well with our uh, Copeland compressors. And if, if there are VFD type applications, you know, we're, we're happy to support that as well. But really where it's different is, is in the, um, when it's running at a low, low capacity, right? If you're running it at 10%, what ends up happening is that because at, at, at a 10% capacity, um, your loaded state is a lot shorter, of course, than your uh, unloaded state, because you're only running at 10%, at 90% it'll be unloaded. So one of the concerns a lot of contractors have, ha have seen is, is the, um, the oil carryover, right? Because with VFDs, and again, VFDs are, are good for certain applications for sure, but one of the concerns is the, the oil carryover in, in the compressor, right? Uh, if it's not like with the, uh, the VFD, you've got an inverter and the motor basically runs, uh, it's not constant, it'll increase and it'll decrease and the oil carryover will shift with it increasing and decreasing. Um, the good thing about digital is that the motor speed remains constant. And, uh, uh, you know, whether it's a scroll, it'll be at 3,600 RPM, or for a discus, it'll be 1,750 RPM at 60 Hertz. And the great thing about that from a lubrication perspective is that there is an oil carryover rate, and this is a, a, an important um, number of 2.5%. So that uh, uh, the fact that the motor speed remains constant will ensure that that the um, that the oil is 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 lubricated throughout the compressor because essentially like it's just like your car right you have to keep your oil ensure that the oil level is at a certain um, level and you you know change your oil uh, in this case you you want to make sure that that the the discus or the scroll has the adequate lubrication and because it's constant it will be. Uh, you know, that's not a concern because it will be going through the compressor even at that 10% loaded state. Um, so that's a very, very good question. Uh, our recommendation would be, yeah, if it's a digital system, um, because of the benefits that I mentioned of the fact that it's constant, really you have nothing to worry about um, or less to worry about. Of course, you have to ensure that, you know, the oil is, uh, you know, check on the oil, make sure that the sensors are working properly. But 
and, and we do have a bulletins that that provide recommendations in terms of maintenance when it comes to uh, you know lubrication. Uh, and I'm and I'm happy to share that as well with uh, with, um, with with whoever uh, requires that. But uh, that's a very good question, and uh, I'm not saying that digital is better than VFDs or vice versa. I'm just saying that in this case, um, uh, especially when it comes to the oil, the lubrication side, there's less to worry about. Hopefully that that answered your question. I think it definitely did, and then uh, some more. So thank you so much, Saki. Um, you know, we got a, a few minutes left in the presentation. If anyone has any other questions, please pop them in the chat right now. Otherwise, uh, it might give some people some time in their day, uh, get a little extra lunch in. We'll just uh, see if there's any questions coming through. Uh, why don't you pop on that last slide with your email? Yeah, I was just going to do that. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, just again, just to share. Um, if you mm. do have any questions, uh, there's my email. Feel free to reach out. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, mm -hmm. We have some excellent resources uh, uh, online for um, for Copeland uh, and digital as well, which uh, I'll be happy to share with uh, with whoever uh, requires it. Awesome. Uh, okay, you know what? Uh, this video will be up online, HRAI's YouTube page. If you have any questions, reach out to Zaki. But uh, thank you so much for joining us today. A lot of great information and uh, a lot of great insights. So really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, and uh, talk to you soon. Fantastic.